what's ever for you. We talk about the central nation and back and I deal with Bitcoin, Litecoin, Mycoin, your coin, blockchain, baby. Mondays at 1600 hours Eastern Studio A. Understanding must arise during these times of unparalleled deceit. A view into the depths of society upon which this country has fallen. A storm brings upon the horizon. It's been said that those that have the eyes to see and the ears to hear will play a paramount role in the furthering of humanity and civilized society. But can civilized society and humanity survive the coming conflicts not seen since a dawn of time and ages by past? But you can find true forms of information and knowledge in abundance at revolution.radio, freedomsluts.com, the number one listener-supported radio station on the globe. Stand upon the right side of history. Right side. The opinions expressed on this radio station, its programs, and its website by the hosts, guests, and call-in listeners or chatters are solely the opinions of the original source who expressed them. They do not necessarily represent the opinions of Revolution Radio and FreedomSlips.com, its staff, or affiliates. You're listening to Revolution Radio, FreedomSlips.com, 100% listener-supported radio, and now we return you to your host. Hi, good evening, and welcome to Sunday Night Live with Christine Hart and Serafina Angelis. Um, we're coming in live from London and Scotland tonight. And how are you, Serafina? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Yes. <laughs> Is it cold up there in Bonnie, Scotland? Do you know, it was it was sunny today, but it has been a bit chilly, especially um, compared to Las Vegas and Utah, it's, uh, <laughs> where I was oh, quite yeah. recently. So it was very nice and hot there. So it has seemed awfully cold since I've been back. But how about London? Is it, is yeah, it fairly cold it's, or is it okay? It's, it's quite warm. It's quite warm down here. We've got our bank holiday Monday um, coming up. So, um, yeah, getting into May. Um, I know it's over there. It's early in the morning in America. So um, hi to everybody across the pond. Um, uh, We've got a guest tonight, the enigmatic magician, Brian Barrett. Brian, are you with us already? Yeah, can you hear me? Excellent, yes. And you're coming in from somewhere... The Czech Republic. Oh, nice. Yeah. (laughs) Nice. A cool Uh, 15 today. (laughs) <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Really? yeah. Um, so, so you've just had to move from the Ukraine over there. Yeah, yeah, we did. So we've been here about two months now. So yeah, it's uh, not ideal, but it's not awful either, which is good. Yeah, that's good. Well, I'm glad you've had time to come on tonight. And um, of course, um, last week Serafina was sharing about her work you know with entities and you know dif- different entities and that was really interesting so I thought we'd carry on the theme this week about what it's like to work with an entity and, and you know you as a guest and ca- how did you first start working with entities and, and who did you choose to, to, to work with? Well I mean um, obviously I was the weird kid to put it bluntly, yeah, um, sort of, I was always contacting spirits or spirits were always contacting me, um, so I had that advantage, 
it was only probably in later life that I understood what, what the spirits represented to me. And then once I understood that, I, be, I, I started a journey which probably very, very few Western people have ever encountered, which is a journey into the gym. Um, and through that journey, uh, I, I work, I work, I would say occasionally with the gin, um, but it's very difficult because they're around all the time. Yeah, um, choosing to work with them is is quite is is quite difficult. Uh, taking advantage of them working with you is slightly easier. Um, they are very difficult to work with. Um, however. They are sort of, in my opinion, probably the uh, the real root of what we understand magic is. You know, they, they go right the way back to Mesopotamia. Obviously, not in the form of the jinn, but they do go back right the way to Mesopotamia. To put it bluntly, so when I, when I work with them, I work with the jinn. However, very few will give their name. Very very few will give their name. Hmm. Uh, Serafina, do you want to ask um, Brian any questions about? Yeah, absolutely. And it's it's a strange coincidence. And uh, although I've, I always say that there's no such thing as coincidence, but uh, I've, I've recently been talking uh, to, to other occultists about the gin, and and it's something that you know has has come up uh, personally for me as as a subject of interest very recently. Um, so my, my, um, I, I guess my, my first, I've got loads of questions for you, Brian, but my first one would be just how you got started down that road. It's like, what, where did the, the interest, uh, in the gin stem from originally? Well, I mean, ever since I was a kid, I was obsessed with the Middle East. Yeah. Mm. Absolutely obsessed with the Middle East. And then I went to India. Um, it was only until COVID I stopped going to India. And then it was in India, I went to uh, Fresh Shalcotta, and uh, it was in Fresh Shalcotta that I, I, I really um, had a, if you like, a, a, a very strong feeling and a strong relationship with the jinn. And then from then, they guided me to other people um, who they wanted me to meet. Um, from them, I met Sir, uh, Sahir from Kashmir. I met um, Hindu adepts who work with the jinn. From them, I've met like African adepts. Um, I've, I've been very, very lucky. Um, the book that I wrote, um, uh, people contact me all over, from all over the world, which is absolutely fantastic. And um, without wanting to sound big-headed or, 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 or overzealous, I, I probably know more than about the jinn than your average non-Muslim will ever know about the jinn. And, and Brian, that uh, that book is jinn illuminated. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, that's that is really interesting and definitely on my to-read list. Okay, because it's it's really interesting that you say this, but um, I've had. Four adepts read it, okay? Uh, mm -hmm. When I say adepts, what I mean is, is um, one was a third generation Sufi. The other one is um, sort of like first generation Sufi. Uh, an, uh, another guy is a very long line of um, working African magicians, and they all say the same thing, that, 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 the, that the book is probably as genuine as you can get. Mm. Uh, they they all, all use the same descriptive word as well. They always say it's incredibly dangerous. Um, and the reason why it's incredibly dangerous is, is, is that a lot of the works that I got through the gin, I wrote down. Uh, there are rituals in there which were allegedly have been lost for hundreds and if not thousands of years, but the, but the, the jinn actually gave me them to put in the book. And um, one of them, I, I've been asked many, many times, where did I find it? And it was literally given to me. 
um, which was via the gen, via the computer. I went on this weird site, found it, publicized it, and it's, it's in the book. Uh, it's up to people if they want to do the actual exercise, but, but essentially every single exercise in the book works. Uh, so, you know, I mean, you, you, there's no messing around. You, 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 you use this book, you will contact the gym or the gym will contact you, whether you like it or, or you don't. It literally is a portal. It's interesting you say that. Um, so recently I've been working a lot with uh, kind of ghost hunting equipment, if you like. So uh, I've been trying various different bits of technology. You know, I, I mean, I've used radionics and I've got uh, I've got the uh, some of the uh, the kind of handheld devices um, like the EMF uh, readers, etc. I've also been using different ghost apps. So uh, EVP apps, trying to find what comes through. And there's one app in particular which was recommended, which I've been using. And it's unlike the others in that the others have a lot of kind of noise and just random words coming through. And I do doubt, you know, how uh, how genuine they actually are. But this one in particular, uh, it's silent for ages and ages. So very rarely a word will come through. And last night I just happened to switch it on to see if anything came through and the word that came through was portal mm, there you go there you go enough <laughs> said you know enough said i mean literally yeah. um the woman who typed my book we no longer speak um she was fed up of she edited it and well she, we edited it together um and she proofread it she, she proofread the book and she was fed up of the lights going on and off when they wanted, uh, answering machines just switching on, computers just dying, or, com or computers in other rooms just switching on. Literally, you know, uh, and, and in the end, when we finished the book, she rang me and she says, I just want out. Wow. I want out. She was terrified. And, and can was, somebody uh, get out, do you think, Brian? Is, you know, is, it, is it a case of once a person has made contact with these entities and you know they're aware of us as much as we're aware of them once that portal is opened and that contact and connection is made do you think that things can never be the same again or do you think it's something that's well, just there forever it, it very much depends who you talk to when i was in india i met um a, a woman adept um very very powerful extremely powerful and she classed the gin as nothing more than irksome children. OK, mm. you know, that was her attitude towards them. She said they're just a pain in the ass and I can't be bothered with them. And, you know, that was it. Uh, you know, they lie, they cheat, they steal, they rob. Um, yeah, they're, they're um, that, you know, they're just irksome. Really interestingly, uh, an adept that I work with um, from an African tradition says that if you do not feed the gin, they just go. OK, you know, so, you know, if you don't uh, kill things or give them blood sacrifice, then they just leave you. They're just like, oh, well, we'll find somebody else who will do it, to put it bluntly. Interestingly, the only gin that really contact people are the very young ones. The old ones don't really bother with people at all. Um, you know, the, 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 that's one thing that I've learned. Uh, adepts do have older gins, thousands and thousands of years old. I know one who's got one that's probably 1,500 years old, and um, he has to feed it. Uh, very rarely uses it, but it's it's there if he needs it. You know, so you know, it, it, it's it's the gin are not how you expect, but the younger ones that come through are like young boys, really. They're quite threatening, they're quite abusive. Um, but usually, if, if, if you know what you're doing, you can have some kind of relationship with them. But it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a very difficult magic. Yeah, it does sound like unlike anything else. And, and it is something, I mean, I've, I've worked a lot with demons and you know, normally when you say the word demon, uh, the, the automatic response and reaction is one of fear and, and dread in your average person. 
And, uh, you know, for, for me, that's something that doesn't really uh, provoke any sort of emotional reaction anymore. The, the word demon, it doesn't, you know, I, I do think of these entities as each individual entity is very separate from each other, very separate characters, very separate personalities. But uh, the, the idea of, of working with the djinn, it, it does fill me with slight trepidation. I think just because it's it, it's somewhat unknown, it's not something that I've studied in depth, but it is something that's very interesting to me. And one thing that I found in working with demons is that whenever I would, well, in, in the past or in the, in the beginning, when I would think that I had suddenly decided to work with a specific demon, that I would soon realise that, in fact, I hadn't decided that at all. They had come to me and they had let me know it's time for you to work with me. And so do you think it's the same with the djinn? Do you think that they approach us or do you think that... Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they approach us, but the djinn are a completely kettle, different kettle of fish. Um, mm. The djinn are legion. You will never get one li- You will never get one djinn, okay? Yeah. If they come through, it's a hundred, it's a thousand, it's, you know, it's ten of them. Occasionally you'll get one or two, but normally it's, you know, ten or a thousand will come through. Um, that's why the adepts work with um, very, very high gins because you've got to keep the other gins away from you because... Um, that that's how they work. That they, 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 you know, it's it's you're never dealing with one, yeah. Yeah. And and if you call one of the higher gins, it will always send an emissary. It will never send itself, yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, the emissary will only deal with you if you've got something to give with it. Um, personally, I don't ask them for anything. Yeah, seriously, right. I, don't, I don't ask them for anything because essentially um, every deal is barbed with them. It doesn't matter what deal you have with them, it's barbed. Right. Uh, every every gin master I know, and I've known a few over the years, have all come to violent ends. You know, seriously. Really? Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, th- there is no love loss between human and, and gin. Uh, you know, there the really isn't. You you can work with them. I know people who work with them, but you have to be incredibly humble. Um, Allah is 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 essential to working with jinn. You have to have a, an incredible relationship with Jack Allah, mm-hmm. and then when you actually work with the jinn themselves, you have to work on their terms. Yeah. Right. It's that simple. You know, the, the, there is no negotiating with them. You know, when you when you read the stories about, oh, I'll send you off and get this and all that lot, forget it. You know, they are creatures of free will. Mm-hmm. Um, they, 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 they will not be ordered around, even slightly. You know, so, uh, and this is, this is one, and, and the, the, there's many other differences as well with, with the gin. If you really pull a gin through, the first thing you feel is heat. Immense heat. Right. Yeah? Uh, I mean, it's it's like someone's just turned the the fire on, or they've turned the central heating up to full. You get absolutely immense heat coming through your body, um, and you know it, it it can be really quite worrying because you know one minute it's cold, next minute it's hot. Um, if you're attacked by a gin. It's absolutely horrific. I've been attacked about three times, and it, and it really is quite horrific. I, I was going to ask, actually, Brian, if you had been attacked. And do you mind describing in, in a bit more detail just what the circumstances were or, or what well, happened? You, well, your whole, your whole body goes berserk. You, 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 you get arrhythmia, you get blood pressure, uh, you get dizziness, everything that you can possibly think will go wrong with your nervous system will go wrong with your nervous system and essentially that's how they attack you they attack your nervous system so you get palpitations you get blood pressure you get everything wrong with you that you could possibly hope to go wrong with you you know it's really horrific Um, what 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 caused it like what, what were the circumstances was it just during a uh, a summoning, or or was it just? Well, no, a, a guy asked me to um, help him with this gin who he was attacked by, and it was garbage. 
um, he actually uh, was a seer, so here, sorry, and he put it on to me, he put the gin on to me, um, which was not very nice of him. Mm. But because I have an absolutely amazing relationship with Allah, uh, I contacted the entity. It took me something like three months to get rid of it. Um, I, I didn't want to use Rukia. I, I just wanted to work with Allah on it, and essentially it was it was it was until I had a hundred percent faith in Allah that that the that the jinn went. Yeah, up to that point where my faith in Allah was not that strong, it was still hanging around. But when I had a hundred percent faith in Allah, it just went. It, it just it, it didn't want to know. You know. And, and so, can I ask you? Yeah. Sorry, sorry to interrupt, Brian. I, I just wonder. So, so I've heard. I had a, a conversation with um, a, another adept recently about the jinn, and he was saying that when he would work with the jinn, it was, it was uh, basically how he put it was that the jinn believe in Allah, but that he said it's not necessary for uh, the practitioner to believe in Allah. It's just necessary for the practitioner to be aware that the jinn completely believe in Allah. So I just wondered what your perspective uh, on that is, if, if you do believe uh, in Allah or if you... Or, or well, I, uh, I wouldn't even go anywhere near them unless you believe in Allah. Right, yeah. End of story. I mean, I mean you know, the, 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 the jinn have been around since Noah was a boy. Um, Allah has also been around since Noah was a boy, but of course Allah was originally the moon god. Um, the moon god and he had three daughters. Uh, this is where Allah comes from. Allah comes from the Arabic, which means the god. Yeah, mm -hmm. And then that was adopted to mean that he was the ultimate god. But out of the, they had 52, in the Kaaba they had 52 top gods and of the 52 Allah was at the top in my experience and all the adepts I work with unless you have a hundred percent faith in Allah I wouldn't go anywhere near the gym particularly and that's a, a difficult one Brian because I, I mean as a, a an occultist a, a witch it's you know, I I do believe in different gods, goddesses, entities, but you know, I, I certainly feel that what I do is such a a, a far cry from following any sort of religious uh, doctrine or religious path. Um, that you know, it's, for me it's, to it's, it's not about religious doctrine or religious path. That they have two bosses. One of them is the Iblis, mm -hmm. and the other one is Allah. The, only, the one they're really frightened of is Allah. The one after, the one that they're not frightened of is Ilbis. Yeah? Um, yeah. And if, you're, if, if you don't have a relationship with either one of them, and I wouldn't recommend a relationship with Ilbis. Uh, Ilbis, you know, is, is, he, he is like, you know, the, 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 well, really the epitome of, of evil, um, then then you will find that you will end up in a world that you, you just don't want to know about, to put it bluntly. And, uh, you know, literally, you know, the graveyard is littered with people who have played with the gin and not known how to play with them. And unless you have ultimate faith, and I mean ultimate faith, then you'll just be eaten alive because, you know, essentially the jinn are not like the demon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the the jinn were the jinn were here first on the earth, way before humanity. And then God introduced humans onto the earth and he said to man, he said to the jinn, you have to bow down to my latest invention if you like the man and this is where Ilbis said no I'm not bowing down to you know this hairless ape with anxiety mm -hmm. and so essentially you know and that's where it started and that's and that's where it ends um, to give you some idea of the power of the jinn is is that uh, I often say that everything is jinn and people say why is everything jinn 
Well, it's, it's unfortunately, it's alarmingly obvious. When you use your phone, the, the base of your phone is silicone. And okay. silicone is sand. That's where gin come from. So essentially, when you use your phone, on some level, you are contacting the gin. Very interesting that you say that. I've recently had conversations about the fact that, you know, the uh, the occult and the Internet or the occult and technology are, are so closely at, connected. And, you know, I, I guess radionics is a good example of that. Uh, but, but certainly... You know, I have thought before about the fact that well, the the devil is in the internet. You know, the the devil well, they, works through. They don't the even internet. hide it. They, they, mm. they call the program underneath it demon. Yeah, but it, right. if you, yeah, if you talk to any adept, they will tell you the jinn are. I mean, it's it's their environment. When you pick on the phone, when you pick the phone up, essentially you um, wish, if you like. Yeah. Mm, yeah. I wish to speak to. And of course, oh, yeah, this is great. I'll take some energy. Bang. You can speak to them. Then you look at your holiday. Oh, I really wish I could go here. I wish I could go there. And this is this is the realm of the, of the gin. And of course, if you notice, as, as the Internet has got older, the information has got more garbled and it's not mm. right, it's not correct. Well, that's the world of the jinn. The world of the jinn is of half lies and truths and manipulation. And, it, and, it, and, and to me, it's so obvious that the, 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 the jinn completely rule the Internet. And, and, you, and, and the other giveaway, of course, is, is that um, how much time people spend with the phone. Mm. And, they, and they don't understand that that's actually the gin pulling them into the phone. And also how young children immediately know how the phones work. And that's because the gin literally contact the young children on, the, on, the, on, on their level. And, and like our, our grand, granddaughter can use the phone better than me. And this was before she could barely talk. You know, so it's like, you know, it, 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 it's... We, we try and keep her away from the phone as much as possible because, you know, you can see when they, when they use the phone, they go right into the phone. And, and it's the same with adults. You know, you can see adults are out and they're just on their phone all the time. Yeah, the, the phone can be absolutely addictive. And, you know, I, I certainly find that social media can be addictive and, and it can also lead to some really toxic behaviours and energy and and, and, you know, especially in what one might call the occult community, you know, there can be so much infighting and what people describe as witch wars and just generally. 99% well, 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 of them, 99% of them, I would say 94% of them can't do anything, to put it bluntly. There are 6% who can. Um, and the rest just seem to be very angry all the time. Yeah. Um, yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. But like, what really upsets me is the six percent who can do something always are, are like backbiting and attacking one another, mm. which I find appalling, really. You know, because um, I didn't become an occultist to be sort of attacking people and cursing people and hitting people and stuff like that. I became an occultist because essentially. Our job as a cultist is to be, if you like, on a higher level of consciousness. You know, yeah, we're, yeah. We're, not, we're not supposed to be market women. Yeah, but that's not mm. being sexist. But you know what I'm talking about. You know, nagging and fighting each other. That's not our job. Our job is is to be, is to be, if you like, the, a pinnacle of a community for people who come to for good advice, for people who want healing. You know, things like this. So, you know, not cursing one another, etc., etc. You know, it's, I find all this inane, particularly. Yeah, I completely agree. And, and I think that, you know, there's so much time and energy spent uh, on, on such trivial matters that could actually be better spent creating content and, you know, and sharing things that we've learned, sharing experiences. And I think that that's what some of the entities, uh, certainly I, I can't speak for the, the gin, but I'd, I, I think it's what they want is for us to take on what they teach us and, and to actually share it. 
I think it's more complicated than that. I think it's as, a local, it's, it's, it's as simple as this. The more you drink wine, the more intoxicated you become with the wine. Mm. The more you are drawn towards a darker entity, the more like the entity your personality becomes. So in the same way you get intoxicated by wine, you get intoxicated by the, if you like, the darker levels of the energy. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And, be and because of that, you end up being a mirror for that energy. So the darker you are, the darker it is, and the, mm. the, the more it feeds off you. Um, but but it, this is really, really dangerous because uh, being in the level and working with the gin, I can tell you that, that there are gin masters out there who are um, what they call witch hunters. Okay? Right. And um, they have gin that are not particularly nice, to put it bluntly. And they will go around the internet looking for these particularly nasty individuals who attack anybody, and they will attack them with the gin. Mm -hmm. Because essentially the gin wants feeding. And, um, yeah, I, I wouldn't recommend it, seriously. I, I, I know them. I, I, know, I know them personally. And, and, and that's what they do. They, they just... They won't even tell you who they are. They'll just join a group and they'll look for the aggressive um, person and then they'll just send their gin on to them. And, uh, you know, it, 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 unfortunately, it, that what I'm telling you is 100% real. And no, I absolutely believe it. And uh, in terms of protection, I mean, what, um, I, I know that you, you have a, a section in your book um, just uh, about protection don't you is, is there any kind of um summary of, of of tips that you could give in terms of what kind of psychological or, or psychic protection you use as a, a bare minimum at least well realistically the, the only protection uh that you have on a lower level is is the is, is allah yeah essentially mm -hmm. if you're going to do it you go with allah if you're going to do it on a much much higher level then essentially you, you need to work with your soul, okay? Yeah. Um, but but more than that, you, you know, it's it, you have to work with your ethereal body. You have to understand, it, it, you, you know, you have to spend hours meditating. You have to realize um, what you actually are. Most people don't understand what they they, they actually are. You know that. They think that the body and the mind is actually them. Well, well, it's not. And mm -hmm. you know, it's, it, you know, essentially, it's, it, it's your ethereal self. It's your, it's your deep self. And um, you know, one has to really understand this. And if if one understands this, then then essentially, you know, you, you stand a much better chance of of of, of um, protecting yourself. I mean. When, when I was in India, you know, we, we, we worked with the Rajas, we worked with the Satas, we worked with the Tamas, you know, and, and worked on these very, very deep meditations. And as, as I've said, it's, you know, these meditations are about making you a better person. Mm -hmm. and, and once you connect with that soul energy, it's pretty difficult for these entities to get to you, if, if at all. But, you know, because essentially... you. You, you are refusing them what they need, if that makes any sense. Mm. Where if you don't, you don't have that faith, you don't have that discipline, then, you know, essentially, you know, you, 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 you're like a, a feast for them. You know, first they'll go for the physical body, then they go for the etheric body, then they go for the astral body. They get it through the ego. Mm -hmm. Then after they've got all the all the easy stuff, they then go for the spiritual self and then they go for like your life spirit, yeah? And yeah. then they then they then they eventually go for the, the Atman, which essentially is, is is your real is your is your real, if you like, part of you which is connected to the soul. And that and that is um, that's really, you know, when they talk about people selling the souls, essentially what, what they're doing is, is they're allowing the Atman to be taken over by an entity, which means when you die, you won't die, you won't reincarnate, you will go into the world 
that, that, that your Atman is connected to, okay? Mm -hmm. And that's it, you're gone. You know, that, that's your eternity. Your eternity will be in that realm, trapped to that, to that entity. It, it really is quite frightening. People don't understand it, but that's what happens. And, and the realm is that uh, what's described as the calf? Well, the, the calf is very, very complicated. Um, realistically, the, 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 the calf boils down to what we understand as the cave, okay? Mm. Um, and the cave surrounds the universe, yeah? Yeah. But you've got to ask yourself, what is the universe? Well, the, if, if you look at the Hindu philosophy, the universe is inside you, yeah? Yeah. So if you allow this calf to surround you, then you would stay within that realm. So w when, you, when you die, you don't ascend, you don't descend, you stay within the realm of the calf. But when you're in the realm of the calf, because the soul is indestructible, the, the jinn use the soul, your soul, to attack other jinns. Okay? Mm -hmm. So you end up in a world where essentially it's just pure violence. And there's nothing you can do about it. You know, it's, uh, and, that, and that's essentially, that, that's, that's been known for thousands and thousands of years, but it's, it's, it's not it's not publicized that much because essentially very very few people talk about it and very very few people know about it I'm lucky enough to know about it um, because of the people that I associate with um, but but realistically that's your fate if you if you mess up with the with the, with, with the gym you end up in what we understand as the calf but you end up as a prisoner mm -hmm. And your soul is then used to destroy anything. Right. It's pretty yeah. And, that, and that's 100% real. I've heard that so many times from so many different sources. You know. and, and, and doing some, some research on, on, on various uh, writings about the jinn, uh, there was one article that I came across and it was, it was relating uh, the, the jinn to Asmodeus. So, it, it was um, it was telling the story that uh, about King Solomon and you know using his uh, a magic ring to control the jinn and to protect himself from them, and then it describes a, a jealous jinn um, and it describes that as sometimes identified as Asmodeus as stealing this ring while King Sol Solomon bathed in a river. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Because I had I had never considered any sort of comparison or connection between. Asmodeus and the jinn before that. Well, uh, unfortunately, um, a, a lot of these um, stories are allegorical. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, for example, uh, did Solomon exist? Yeah. You know, I mean, that's mm -hmm. that's a serious question because essentially, you know, you've got Sol and you've got Mon, which is you know the ancient name for sun is Sol. And the ancient name for moon is 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 moon. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Sol so Solomon could be a representation of the of, of, if you like some sort of celestial body. Yeah. Okay. Right. Or the or the two celestial bodies. Um, the ring could be Saturn. Um, you know. It's, it's very difficult to understand what they actually mean, or is it actually a direct interpretation of what is, you know, there was a man called Solomon, he was given a ring by the angel, he did have control over the jinn, yeah? Yeah. Um, we, unfortunately, we, we don't know, you know, we, we don't know. It is written in the Quran, there are people who believe everything that is in the Quran is completely, you know, 100%. There are other people who believe it's like like most things that they're they're just purely aragolical and 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 that you know it, it it's just another story so that the so that people understand 
what they're dealing with and why they're dealing with it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. And I, I have some history and some personal connection to Islam because um, I, I was married to a, a Muslim for a number of years. And, uh, and, and so I, I did have experience of, of going to, um, to an Islamic country and uh, on, on several occasions and to seeing some, like firsthand some of the, the beliefs and some of the, well, what at the time I, I suppose I would have considered superstitions. Um, but I suppose one thing that I wonder is just how, how comfortable your average Muslim person would be kind of talking about or sharing knowledge about the jinn because when I was uh, so I, I went to Algeria several times that's where, where my uh, ex-husband was from and certainly there were a lot of kind of whispers and a lot of superstitions and, and things around around magic and around witchcraft and I, I didn't really understand exactly what was going on at the time it was it was before I had read or, or learned anything about the jinn and I know that there was a, a real reluctance to talk about it and a real kind of feeling and an expression that anything to do with the occult or to do with witchcraft or talking about spirits was haram. It was, you know, un, ungodly. So, uh, but then... Uh, yeah, you're 100% right. I mean, you know, yeah. sort of like, most, most Muslims will stay away from the jinn. Mm. However, there are sects that work with the jinn. They tend to be Sufi. Yeah, mm -hmm. the, um, or they tend to be a very, very strange sect. I mean, I, I'm lucky enough to know a sect that's in Kashmir, and they work with the jinn. Um, but, but, but there's a lot of hypocrisy as well. A, a lot of hypocrisy. You know, for example, um, because I know these guys, you will get the Imrans coming to them and saying, "Oh my, you know, my, my." Uh, my uh, uh, my, my, uh, I don't know what they call it, but we call it parish in England. But the mm. um, congregation isn't strong. I need a stronger congregation. You know, uh, I need to sort of be able to pay my debts. And uh, and they will go and see these Sahir, and they will make a deal with them. And mm. and the next week, their 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 mosque will be full. Right. You know. You know. So it it. it, it there is, a ch and when a woman wants to know about if she can get pregnant and things like this, they once again they will go to the Sahir. It, you know, so it's like it's it's um, uh, it's when you speak to people like the Sheikh, who is a, a friend of um, Christine's. You know, he says the same thing. On one level, you know, it's like, no, no, we don't want anything to do with them. We don't want to be kafal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On the other yeah. level, the minute they have problems, they rush straight off to the gym without even thinking about it. And, they, you know, and, and they sit here. So, you know, the, the, there is a, a massive double standard there, to put it bluntly. And if they're having problems with somebody, they will pay us to her to curse them. Right. You know? you know, so it's like, you know, so on one level, you're absolutely right. They won't say a word. On another level... You know, the minute they have problems, they they, they run off to the so the, it's you know it's it's uh, it's it is quite confusing, really. It is, and I, and I suppose that's why I, I was slightly confused when you were saying about having a strong relationship with Allah, because uh, you know I I feel that so to have from what I've been taught, you know, during all that time being um, in a, in a, in an Islamic family, I was I was taught that you know to have a strong relationship with Allah, one has to be Muslim, one has to um, you know follow all the teachings and the, the rules of the Quran. So uh, you know to in order, do you feel that you can have a strong relationship or belief in Allah without? Well, I mean, being is, 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 is all religions are clubs, aren't they? All religions are businesses, aren't they? Mm. To put it bluntly. Yeah. So, of course, you know, we're, we're just back to the same, if you like, uh, business model. If you want to be without Allah, then you have to join our club. Yeah. And if yeah. you join our club, you've got to give so much money. Etc. Etc. Um, I don't find that to be the case. Uh, the Allah that they understand and the Allah that I understand are two different Allahs. The Allah that I understand is the is the Allah, the Moon God. Mm -hmm. The Allah that they understand that they see as a, as a as a different type of deity. However, having researched my book, 
and researched it at a, an extreme academic level, I don't see any evidence for the Allah that they are talking about. I see plenty of evidence for the Allah, which is the moon god, but I don't see, I, I, I see very, very little evidence of the Allah that, 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 that they promote, to put it bluntly. Hmm. And what's another name for the for the moon god, Brian? Oh, there's hundreds. Um, you're probably meaning the name Sin, yeah? Uh, that's one of the oldest names. Um, so when you know when the Christians were saying you shouldn't sin, it wasn't meaning you shouldn't be bad. What it meant was was that you shouldn't contact Sin, who was a moon god. You know, for example, um, uh, recently they they found. Um, evidence of the Queen of Sheba and um, her, one of her deities that she worshipped, she worshipped Sin, yeah, so, you know, he, he's, but um, the, the moon gods and goddesses, um, I mean, before Christianity, uh, I mean, the whole thing was in verse, um, the, the, the sun was um, essentially feminine, and the moon was masculine, yeah? However, throughout, if you like, ancient history, the moon has been both masculine and feminine, okay? Mm -hmm. And so that's quite confusing as well. I've got some um, sort of uh, proto-Arabian sculptures, and the, and the moon is a, um, a, a hermaphrodite, yeah? Um, and it's shown as an, an, an hermaphrodite. So I mean, you know, the, 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 we're, we're dealing with a, a religious system which goes back thousands and thousands of years, and over the years, it, obviously, it's it's like any system, like any business, they change it to sort of you know improve their model, so to speak. Uh, Brian, can you tell us a bit about shape shifting in, in relation to the the jinn and also their association with snakes? Well, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's their main form. Their main form is the snake. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing is, is, is this is where it gets really, really, really complicated. Um, Obviously, in the Christian religion, the snake is seen as the adversary. But if we, say, look at the um, Hindu religion, which, if I need information, I always go back to the Hindu religion, because it, 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 through what I understand and research, it is one of the oldest religions. Now, in the Hindu religion, the, they talk about the Naga, yeah? Mm. And they see the Naga as... Um, really complementary to human development because it was the Naga that convinced Eve to eat the apple, yeah, and find the knowledge, okay, and th th because the snake did that, the, 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 the snake is seen as, as if you like as a saviour of humanity, so to speak. And it, you know, if you like, it, it allowed humans to have free will. Um, on the other side, of course, is that um, when s somebody is, well, when humanity is over zealous about the intellect, then they ignore the soul and they become more and more materialistic and they become less in balance with the soul. And essentially, you know, that's when society, you know, runs down because it, it, it doesn't have that balance. So, you know, it, it, it depends who you talk to and what you read, you know, as, as, as to whether or not the snake was a good or a bad thing. It's strange because I've been talking to, to my fiancé about snakes and, and to a friend about snakes over the last couple of days and, and at the same time that I've been thinking and talking about the gin just out of kind of out of nowhere um, and uh, it, it leads me to wonder again if 
there's any possibility in it, in it like you're putting on this kind of if they it's, the it's gin. completely related the, 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 yeah uh, if, if if a gin if a if a gin is going to uh, materialize in front of you it will be as a snake so my my fiance had a dream about uh, about snakes, so we were talking about that. So, uh, do you think that it would ever be the case that the jinn would want to connect with humans? Well, would yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, it will be younger jinn. Yeah, it will be younger, younger jinn. Yeah. yeah um, I mean, when, um, but I was really lucky because when I was working on my book, I I got older ones, and they were showing me stuff that 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 that's. Um, literally people had forgotten and it was only through talking to adepts that, 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 that I understood you know the real value of the information that I was being given just literally mm-hmm. being given I was like finding books I was finding information which 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 had been lost you know it, mm-hmm. it, it, it was um, it was quite incredible um, so you know I, I feel incredibly blessed I, I really do but um, but the one thing that I always kept when this is happening was to, was to I, I tried to keep keep as uh, as as humble as possible because I didn't want to give them the energy of the ego, you know, because mm. it, 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 that's you know that's how they get into you, you know, the, right. the, you know the, the, that's their that's their that's their green light. The minute that you think that you are wonderful, the minute you think that you're doing this, that's that's when they take over. You know, they, so they, is, they is, is the is the naga is that a jinn? Yeah, hundred percent. What kind of jinn yeah. is the? What kind of jinn is a naga? It's well, it's a very very old jinn. It goes right the way back to sort of like the creation myth. Um, your naga is, is 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 all the is is all the way through um, Hinduism. Uh, even today, you can go to many, many places, uh, Hankor Wok and places like this, and you will see sculptures of the snake, of the Naga. You know, and and like, even today, even though they're like Muslim, they will still come and, and rub the snake for luck and things like this. It's it's uh, you know it's I mean this the, the, this whole this whole snake thing is 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 it's older than we could even possibly imagine, seriously. And uh, the Naga is, is the jinn. There's no two ways around it. But you what, have to remember... Kind, because uh, you said there was a, a couple of types of jinn, the Majid, the Shaitan. So which type uh, would the Naga be? Well, the Naga is just... is Well, it would probably be Shaitan, you know, in nature, because it was like one of the first... Yeah. Right. You know, it wouldn't because the other ones are elemental. Yeah. Um, right. You know, that, that's another thing as well that people don't really understand about the jinn that, you know, you have the sort of like Majid, you know, you have the sort of Ifrit, you have the Jan. Yeah. You know, sort of. You have them all, uh, but they all have their own specific frequencies. Yeah. And, the, and they all have their own sort of, um, if you like, realms of consciousness of, of where they live, etc., etc. You also have the gahul, which um, is part of the jinn. Interestingly, the ifrit. Whenever you read anything about the ifrit, it, it's always the ifrit of the jinn, which is quite interesting. Yeah. So they're like, yes, they're a, they're a jinn, but they're kind of a cousin of the jinn, if that makes any sense. So, so why does Shiva surround himself by um, serpents? Well, he, he has the, he has the um, he has the cobra around his neck, doesn't he? Yeah. Hmm. Well, the, the I mean that that ties into the um, the the one of the things the adepts do in India is when you're a succinct yoga, they will go to where the snakes are and they control their breathing and their temperature, yeah, okay, so that the the snake will come up to them and will not bite. Now, like, if it's the king cobra or the cobra, which is around Shiva's neck, 
if you're in its vicinity, it will bite you. Yeah. So for you to not sweat, panic, or make any sudden movements, or your heart to race to sort of trigger the the the, the snake's instinct is incredibly difficult. So essentially what they're showing with Shiva is that he has this sort of um, detachment that even a snake can go around his neck and not bite him. It, it, it's more to do with the, um, the, 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 the yoga sense of the non-ego and the, and the sort of like being in a state of uh, samadhi as opposed to sort of like communicating with Jim. Oh, I see. Interesting. Um, I think we've come to the end of the show now. Uh, yeah, we just got five minutes. So oh, sorry. Don't you... be sorry. It's been been fascinating. And and Brian, if anyone wanted to contact you, if, if I don't know if you um, have a website or if you do consultations or or anything, but what's the best um, way the, for people to get the, in touch? The best way is on on Facebook. Um, yeah. literally sort of Brian Barrett um, or, or they go to my site which is Demon Piscis um, it, it's it's a very small site but, but I'm very very lucky because literally uh, the only people who go to the site are adepts and it's it, it's absolutely fantastic because um, I learn so much you know it's, it's like amazing it's it, it's sort of like it's only like sort of like 400 or 500 people but the they're all pretty much adepts, and um, so I, I learn so much. It's it's incredible. Um, but I mean, the thing is, 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 is I designed it so that only really adepts will be able to understand it, if that makes any sense. You know? Yeah, absolutely. And your your book, Gin Illuminated, is available on Amazon. Um, in Kindle, yeah, Kindle. Kindle, yeah. Kindle form. It sounds like you read a little bit of it. Yeah, I have. I've I've read um, some of it, so I'm, I'm going to definitely download the whole thing and and read it through. And and I think from from what you've said today, I'll, I'll be reluctant to dive straight into any sort of workings, but I'm definitely eager to learn about it. Yeah, I mean, I, I'd be very very careful. I'm not saying that you know, sort of like out of hubris. I'm saying it to be you know, like I I would um, do as much meditation as you can before you read it because everybody who adepts like yourself who read it they they do get contacted right you know and and it can be if you never met a gin it can be quite frightening i can i can imagine (laughs) thank you so much so have a good night everybody you too thanks for coming on brian yeah thanks Thanks, chris everybody for listening and see you guys next week see you next week Bye. bye Radio at freedomslips.com. We'll be right back after this message. junkie, I won't say a goddamn word. What? They won't understand. They won't understand why we do it. They won't understand it's about the men next to you. And that's it. That's all it is. Revolution Radio. Freedomslips.com. Number one listener supporter radio, the printing press for freedom at a time when freedom is needed the most. I am Bill Johnson. 
Some consider my efforts to be an underground law school. I am not an attorney and I do not give legal advice. I teach. That's lawful and legal. Consider yourself served. You are to appear Wednesday nights, 10 p.m. Eastern, Studio A. My forte? Foreclosure and contract law. Grab your legal pad and pen. Learn a broad spectrum of law spanning administrative, criminal, family.